Hey, how y'all doing? Amen. I said, how y'all doing? Awesome, 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 awesome. God is good, man. All the time. All the time. And all the time? Yeah. Hey, that's what's up. Well, welcome. Thank you all for another Sunday, amen. amen. You know, uh, I just really appreciate y'all last week for past appreciation. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, I'm honored. Every time it's hit me by surprise, like, oh, yeah, well, it's past appreciation. But this, this the events last week, man, God is so good. Yeah, because man. y'all don't even know how on time that past appreciation was and meant to me and Keisha. But uh, just a little small testimony. We had our furnace go out about a week ago. And a guy came over. He put a little tag on our furnace as Kadim. And they said, well... This is, this is one of those high-tech furnaces, and it's going to cost about $6,000. <laughs> and I was like, in my head, the devil is a lot. <laughs> I ain't paid no $6,000 for the And so he said, like, well, you could get finance, you could do So what you going to do? Well, you got to do something because I tagged it, so you, you can't work it until you, you know, I'm like, I'll, I'll deal with it later. And so I had the guy leave, and I called some people up. And this is the thing about God. God will put something in your spirit before the person even comes there. Yeah. And one of the things I've learned is not to settle what, what you first hear. You just keep calling until you hear what God has, has said it in your heart of how much you should pay. Yeah. And it took a couple of calls and calls, and I had a guy come over and he said, oh, this ain't going to cost no $6,000. Uh, Actually, I can just replace the motor and do it this and this. It'll be about $600. I was like, hey, He came on the first day, he couldn't fix it. The second day, he couldn't fix it. The third day, it's about 30 degrees now, he couldn't fix it. Then the fourth day, amen, amen. he got it working, amen. amen. And I, you know, I gave a little extra, 200, you know what I mean? But when you all gave the uh, the finances to uh, me and Keisha, it was the exact amount. Wow. Uh, you know what I mean? So, wow. that was good, guys. And today we're going to hit on recovering your sight because a lot of us, we've been hit with slip over the eyes sometimes. Yeah. And then situations don't go our way. Uh, I can think about two instances of re- helping other people recover their sight, a marriage problem when I was assistant pastor down the word in Shaw, where police were called, some hands was about to get thrown. And I'm like, come on, man. Y'all. And I remember praying with this couple, touching and agreeing with them. And the spirit of, how many of you know when you start praying and you start focusing on God more than your circumstances, the circumstances change. See, when you don't work, worship the circumstances and worship Christ, then you let the light, just like Anthony would say, you let the kingdom through. But if you don't believe that the kingdom can flow through you, then guess what? You will be falling to any circumstance that gets your way. And you have to have an understanding. Everybody say, the kingdom of God is in me. It's not going to rain on you. (laughs) It's going to rain out of you. And the reason why a lot of Christians are stuck, broken, and beat down is because they believe in that it's going to come from above instead of come from within. And when you have an understanding it's not on you, it's in you, then there's a different authority that you walk with. There's a different approach that you do. You just don't let anything come out your mouth. You can, hey, you can get knocked down seven times and you like, okay, we're the eighth time. It, it's a different beat in your step when you know that the Spirit of God is in you. Another situation, I, I, I've talked about this before, where a guy got disrespected his job and I talked to the brother. He was about to go spray up the whole job and this is the same thing that's praying over him, laying hands on him, saying that you're worth it. You're valuable. You are loved. God still loves you. Think about your kids. Think about your wife. Think about And what happened is he was like, and like I say, every year he gives me a call. He said, man, thank you for helping me to not go in that place and make a dumb decision. Wow. But I said, you know what? It wasn't me. It was the Christ in me letting yeah. him know that he loves you and you're more valuable than that. Amen. And when you recover a person's sight, it's not like Ms. Sharon said, don't boast about it. It's you. It's the Christ in you. The hope of glory. But when you lose hope, then 
you lose glory. Yeah. <laughs> when you have not an expected end of your outcome, what happens is you start writing out your own end. And that's where we get in trouble, amen? amen? And so the thing that God wants us to do in Luke 9, 12, and we're going to come from a lot of scriptures today. Well, not too many, but just to let you know what happened with Jesus when he got struck with certain situations. And it's like there was maybe bigger than what it seemed to be. And Luke 9, 12 says, when they begun to wear away, the 12 came to his disciples and said to him, Send the multitude away that they may go into the surrounding towns and countries and lodges and get provisions for we are in the desert place here, deserted place here. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fishes unless we go and buy food for all these people. For there were 5,000 men. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to what? He looked up to heaven. Now check this out. This was still in the old covenant because Jesus didn't die yet. He look up, we look down. Because Christ is what? In us, the hope of glory. He looked up to heaven. He blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were what? Filled. And 12 batches of, of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Even Christ himself in this flesh suit, had to stop looking at the complainers, had to stop looking at the five. You got this, you got this, you only got two, you only got. He, the Bible says he had to what? Look up. Why? The reason why is you can't speak victory looking at your circumstance. <laughs> I'll have people say, all right, now say this. I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. And I, I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. You're looking at your circumstance saying that. So you can't release nothing. Uh -huh. To release something, you have to look at what God's yeah. word said yeah. and then speak it. Yeah. He looked at heaven. How does heaven look like? It's beautiful. What's your name in it? It looks like forgiveness. It looks like you don't have a stain on your body. It looks like you have been forgiven. Yeah. It looks like you. It looks like you have the best garment ever in the world, and you are the best thing since sliced bread. Oh, man. That's what it looks yeah. like. So as you're looking at heaven, then you speak. Yeah. But until then, don't say nothing until you see what God has to oh, say. Yeah. What happened if I would have just bought a furniture because you just said so? Yeah. How many times we hit gate out of our anointing? Ganked out of our blessing. Ganked out of what God wants to give to us because we just come in agreement for what is. Oh. The whole thing of this is you look up and then you see what God has to say about it. Yeah. Because if you start having a conversation with yourself, you can make up anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I always tell the people, let God's word be your what? Be, be your spirit God. Let the word be your lamp. Let him, let him speak to you. To, to do what and do say and say what's what. And I've had people come to me and say, you know what, Pat, I want you to pray with me that I get married. I said, okay, we're going to touch and agree. Yeah, and this person, they married right now, but they don't know. I'm here. I'm like, oh, I can't pray for that. <laughs> but I tell you, the word says, don't cut another person's heart. So we can pray for a different person. Well, why do you hate your me? I'm not hating on you. I'm letting you know what the Bible says so you won't get frustrated. Because right. I see a lot of people praying for things that the Bible already calls what it's going to be. Yeah. Like I said, I just pray that all poor people are going to be gone, eradicated. There's going to be no more poor people. We're going to pray for that. I can't pray for that because the Bible says you will always have the poor among you. Yeah. So if you pray for that, I pray for the individuals that we can help. Because God is for the person. 
Yeah. You know, peace. I pray for peace in the Middle East. Yeah. I want to. I want them to have peace too. Yeah. But the Bible always. Ishmael will always be at war with Isaac. Yeah. This is from the. This is from the beginning of time. Yeah. But I do pray that some people can find Christ and see Jesus within this war and be delivered out. See, the thing about it is Jericho is going down no matter if you want to or not. Yeah. But if there's a Rahab in there, <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason why you don't just destroy your whole family and pass them away. No. Because there's still somebody in there that's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. There's still somebody in your family that says, you know what? I think I still got a chance. Mm -hmm. And God says, no, there's a Rahab there. We, it, it's, listen, God, we just pray for the government that they just prosper. The Bible says every government will fall before Jesus returns. Yeah. Yeah. So we can't pray for those things. But what we can pray, and if you don't think this is who Jesus is, the Bible says something like this. I'll leave the 99 to go get the what? Yeah. What they said? Math, math, math ain't math. They ain't, uh, what do you mean? 99 is more. No. God is about your soul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come, on, Come on, man. So when I hear people, you have to align your prayer from the word of God. Yeah. Okay, well, can you pray that I just won't have no trouble? I can't. <laughs> why can't I, why can't I pray that? It says this in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will. Yeah. This that you might. <laughs> you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I focus on the latter. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because the latter belongs to you. But if you focus on the trouble, then the trouble will belong to you. Trouble is always going to come, but trouble don't define your life. <laughs> when do we just start letting trouble say, oh man, I, you know, I had a flat tire last week. Oh man, God must be telling me, yeah, go, he's telling me to go get my tire plugged up. <laughs> That's what he's telling me. Circumstances don't tell you nothing. God's word tells you something. And if God says yes, then no devil in hell can say no. But guess what? Trials and tribulation is a promise, just like peace is a promise. And you have to have an understanding that even though we go through the ebbs and flow of life, it doesn't define my life. And actually, it's the same thing as a heartbeat of life. Because as we go through the battles, you learn who God is. You don't learn who God is sitting on the couch and having it all good. You learn who God is sometimes by seeing who God is not. Because I know exactly who God is by his goodness. Because I know that devil is a dirty devil. Yeah. And he don't want nothing from me that's good. He don't want me to worship. He don't want me to love. He don't want me to rejoice. And so, you know what? I go even 10 times harder when tribulation comes knocking at my door. Amen. Amen. But in this world, you will have tribulations. So, going back to letting the word be your lamp. In Psalms 119, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So, if I get hit with the troubles of life, I don't look to myself to see why do I get hit? I look to the scripture and say, what does your word say about these circumstances? And when I read the word every time, he says that you have the victory. Sometimes you get hit and you want to kind of go in the shell and just hide away from people. But when you let the word of God says, do not forsake the assembly of the brother. Yeah. You know what? You know, I went through something this week. And coming in this church today, man, my brother Anthony gave me a big hug. I got love from so many people even before I even started preaching. And when you listen to the word of God and you don't retreat every time you get hit and you don't run to your, your you know, sometimes you want to go to that comfort zone, whatever that comfort zone is. But you know what? Let the Holy Spirit be your comfort zone. Let the word of God be your comfort zone. Let the forgiveness, let the word illuminate your heart. And you know what? I've let my emotions tell me so many things, so many fickle things. It's time to let the word of God be my Lord and my master. Yeah. How do you feel today? When I feel great. Why? Because God woke me up. Yeah. I feel love. Why? Because he said he loved me. Uh -huh. We're not going to have to have a brainstorm meeting about his love. Uh -huh. We're not going to have to have a meeting about if he loved me or not. 
God is documented already. Yeah. And only thing I do is gotta assert my heart and say yes and amen, and it's mine. Yeah. We are so much in a warfare of having an understanding that a circumstance does not define your life. That's one moment. That person that I, I, I prayed for, they was about to shoot up the place. That was one moment, yeah. one five seconds that somebody cussed him out and disrespected him. Wow. And he was about to lose it all. What they call it, crashing out. Mm -hmm. For one moment, one moment don't define who you are. <laughs> His life defines who you are, amen. amen. So guess what? You have a choice in this life. Well, when it depends on, you know, how, how's your, how, how the world treat you today, Wendell? Well, it really don't matter how the world treats me today. It's how I'm treating the world. <laughs> we have a choice every day between what? Life and death. It says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, choose what? Life. Well, how do you choose life? Sometimes you choose life by just saying, Nothing. <laughs> and just saying, you know what, God? I just come in agreement. I'm going to shut my mouth. Yeah, Sometimes you choose life where you feel the most goofiest and you're speaking life even though you got death behind you. But you speak life in the midst of darkness. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, God is sovereign, but he's sovereign to the rules he's established. But he's not sovereign over your will. Your will in his sovereignty, like gravity is there, no matter if you believe it or not. Yeah. You jump off this building, you'll find out gravity is real. Yeah. What goes up, what's we'll come down. Come but God got laws as well, like children obey your parents and the Lord. And then our culture, we try to study why, why the, why these people live in law, why this, and we forsake the word of God that says children obey your parents and the Lord. But this is right, so you you live long. That's the that's a cold right there. If you honor your parents, you live longer. And then guess who's the number one coach that respects their parents? The Asian community. They respect the heck out of their parents. But we try to study their ginseng tea and all these other things and try to get their herbs and try to get these spices. No, it's the honor. <laughs> it's all these other things that we forsake because the thing about the principles of God is whether you believe it or not, the principles are true. Yeah. An unbeliever can work the principles and not have the prince. Oh. But it's more of a blessing to have the prince and the principles. Because oh. some people fight, are you a great person or are you a principal, bro? I'm both. Yeah. I can have the prince and go see the king one day, and I can also operate by his principles. Yeah. And not block myself out of blessings. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Because when you know his principles, things just open up to you even more, man. I, I, I just love God because he ain't got to show us his principles. But he does anyway. He ain't got to show Give a little bit here. Do this. Do this. And things will open up. Some of the principles that God says, I don't even understand it, but I do it. I ain't got to know it to understand it. And I ain't got to understand to know. Only thing I have to do is obey. Mm -hmm. oh, do you know how a seed grows up? You don't know. You think, oh, yes, yeah, photosynthesis. No, that's just a word we made up. <laughs> we don't know how seeds grow, but we know if we plant it, it will come. And I don't know how the word of God have me every Sunday coming up here like fire in the devil, but, <laughs> but I know that God is real. Once you install the word of God in you, it will come up. And it comes up by itself. Yeah. When trouble hits your life, it's you like, whoa, where's this encouragement come from? That's all those low enough you've been doing. Yeah. That's all those you confident people and seeing God being their Messiah. And now when it's your turn, because you you got so much stock in this, yeah. it hits you. Then guess what? You just wipe it right off. I'm ready to go. Because God loves me. Yeah. Okay, God, what's next? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, choose life, God. Don't choose death. Choose what God wants for you. And what he wants for you is the best. But, what about the tribulations? What about the trouble? Life is not linear. Come on. <laughs> okay? Come on. Life got its challenges. 
And then understanding that, I seen this one last night. The quality of life. Sometimes it's, oh no! Then it's, whee! <laughs> then it's, well, you already know what this is. <laughs> then it's, here we go! Then it's, oh, hang on! Then it's, yeah, baby! Then it's, oh, baby! It's, it is keep, but guess what? You know what this looks like? This looks like a valley. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I shall fear no. I'm not going to fear evil through the oh no. Come on. <laughs> I'm not going to fear evil in the not again. I'm going to look at the top of the mountain, which come my help. That's what I'm going to look at. We always want to get away from this, but this is life, baby. But at the end of that life, you can't have a rainbow without rain. God. When life hits you, stop moving around acting like God left you. I always wonder about God. Like, God, you told David he was going to be king. Why didn't you didn't tell him he was going to get chased by a fool for 13 years? You told Joseph he was going to be king. Why didn't you tell him his brother was going to forsake him? That his family was going to hate on him. That he was going to be in a pit for over 30 or 40 years. You missed some stuff out of the promise. Because when God speaks his promise, that's all he sees. Yeah. Do you understand? God is straight spirit. Come on, man. <laughs> but in the valleys, as you're going through these, this is the thing I've learned. God is with you. Yeah. He didn't tell him that because he wants him to be more focused on the promise than the valleys. Yeah. And how many of y'all love read Psalms? Yeah, yeah I like it. I, I just heard somebody talking about Psalms today. And we love Psalms. We love reading about David, and he wrote most of the Psalms. All that time he was getting chased by crazy Saul. We love reading about Psalms, but God, I don't want no Psalms for my life, though. <laughs> what you're going through, document it. Because you got a Psalms for somebody else's life. I Google what Psalms mean. It's a romantic poetry of your life, of the distresses of good and bad, good and evil, and God bringing you through. We need to preach Psalms. If you read Psalms, you will see that life is not linear, that it got its challenge. How many times David, I'm like, is David bipolar or something? Oh God, you are mistaken me. I don't know what, but you have always been my rock. I'm like, <laughs> Which one is it, David? <laughs> well, you're reading in real time of him hiding out in the mountains. You're reading in real time of his son dying. You're reading in real time of him going through. But at the end, David wins. At the end, you win. At the end, all of us that's in Christ will see each other. We're going to be in matches together yeah, in heaven, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to think about losing when life is here. You ain't got to be thinking about your next chapter when life is here. Come on. See, we so much anxious thinking about, I remember somebody came to me when I was teaching at the Freeway Foundation, look kids, about violence prevention. And a brother, he prophesied to me, and it was a good prophecy. He said, you know what? Forget these little kids, brother. You're going to be ministering some, some people in your day. But I'm telling you, I've been seeing in you. And he said some good things, but I had to slow and roll. I said, yeah, but guess what? God got me here right now. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to disrespect what God got me yeah. to think about what God's going to take me. Yeah. If he got me here, I'm not going to let you breed discontent for these kids, for these babies. They got to learn what they got to learn. And then when it's time to get what? I walk to the next chapter. Yeah. If you don't know how the enemies blind you with smut, look at Adam and Eve. He made them think that what they got ain't nothing. He make you think that what you got on your little square foot, or your little square foot apart, or your little, no, no, it ain't little, it's big in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your little check, your little this, your little, no, it's big. Yeah. Yeah. Never just count what God has given to you as small. You know what I mean? People would trade places just to be in your spot. And you thinking about what you ain't got? Yeah. He got everything. Adam had everything. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes, it's the certain, I hate to say it, other people in your family, people that will tap you and, we ain't got it. No, we got it. But you know what? Eve used 
that to get Adam, but I see a lot of people use Adam to get Eve as well. well. And what I say is, anybody can be the agent under the flesh. Yeah. Anybody can be an agent under not having an understanding that what God has me right now, it's for me. And just because I have a disappointment, what a disappointment mean? That means that you had an appointment and it got this. <laughs> you had you had something that you was about to hit. Joseph should have been walking right in kingship and he got landed in jail. You know what I mean? But when you have disappointments, I always say this, kind of like the hangover. Did it kill you? <laughs> Are you still are you still breathing the Nanishama, the breath of life? Are you still, is your heart still pumping? Did it end over? <laughs> so rejoice, amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because you have a disappointment don't mean you don't got the appointment still. The appointment didn't get canceled by God because of a circumstance. Oh, man. The disappointment does not describe who you are. It only describes what this world is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the Bible says this about Jesus. He said, if you knew who I was, you would not do this to me. Yeah. Yeah. So why does evil happen on this world? Because right now it's under control of evil men. Mm -hmm. But if you know who God is, God always raises up a Moses. God always raises up uh, 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 Isaac. Uh, 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 he, uh, he always raises up a person, a uh, uh, Joshua. But the thing about these people is they meet so many resistance before they get to the promised land. Yeah. And some of us get tricked of enjoying the journey instead of enjoying the promised land. Ooh. Joshua and Caleb, they enjoyed the journey. They said, you know what? We're going into Jericho and we're going to have fun with this. <laughs> this is our land. He sent two spies over and the two spies agreed that this is our land. Joe Moses was at the same lesson. Come on. He sent 12 spies and 10 came back and said, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. Guess what? They got blinded. Their, their, their eyesight wasn't recovered because they got smut over it because they obeyed what they saw and not what God said. Mm. But you don't need a lot of people for it to get it popping, baby. That's all you need is two. For mm. we're two agree, guess what? God is there. So yeah, we have disappointment. I remember we was looking for a, a building like this, and I mean we went to like 20 different places, man. It was like heartbreak after heartbreak, like the heartbreak, and then the school was about to close. So we was gonna be out of the school. And I'm like, God, where is our place? He says, listen, just because you search 20 different places don't mean the appointment is gone. Time this, you know, I'm, we're going to a wedding this afternoon, me and Keisha. And, you know, this is going to be a wonderful wedding because I always say to Keisha about her friend, I'm like, man, she seemed like a cool lady. It seemed like she would have been married. But as I look at this evil world, <laughs> yeah. some people just ain't ready for something wonderful. And, you know, I, I remember talking to her at one of my birthday parties. I was like, and she was like, you know what, Wendell? I'm just not going to settle. And I said, hey, I can't be mad at you. Yeah. And she kept waiting and kept waiting. I know she's 45 probably now, but she getting married today Amen. to her divine man. Amen. Amen. And, that, and, and that just touched my heart because I was thinking, well, maybe, you know, sometimes the devil, maybe they miss, maybe that. No, they ain't miss nothing. Because when you're waiting on the Lord, he will renew it. Don't do it on your own strength. Say what God has to say about that, baby. And you'll see him reveal it. And just because he didn't reveal it at 25, doesn't mean it's not going to be revealed at 45. Or 55. Or 65. You never know. Yeah, man. But I don't put God in no body. And that's what happens to anybody that I've counseled that wanted to take the life. They let one circumstance equate all the goodness that God has been. We look at that one tree that we ain't got and equate it to us having nothing. When God is so powerful, God is so strong, God is so loving, man. Yeah. He wants to recover all of our sight today. Yeah. If any, any of us 
that believe that, man, maybe I just missed out on life. Maybe, you know, the, the number one thing I've learned as being a pastor, it's easy to recover people's sight when they believe in grace, forgiveness, mm. second, third, fourth, hundred chances. It's so hard to redeem a person who just only believes in the law and don't believe in the law of love. Mm. When a person believes in, you know, they actually believe it and they actually go out with the act immediately like, like Jesus did. It's no difference between Judas and Peter. Only difference is one waited and one didn't wait. He said, you know what, today I'm going to play God. I'm going to take my life. Every, every hour, 17 people commit suicide. And it's sad because it's been an hour, amen? But guess what? The hour has come also where it's thousands and millions of people that's not. It's people that say, you know what? I think God, if I hold out for a little bit longer, I think God may have something for me. Amen. I think, I think, you know, I think if I hold out, there is a GFO out here somewhere. If you don't know my life, I went from ministry to ministry to ministry to ministry, and I could not find anyone that could really uplift a people like I see, you know, how God wanted them to be uplifted. That, that, that can walk in that door every time and say, you know what, I feel fresh, I feel clean, I feel the smut come off me as soon as I walk in. I don't hear a lot of places like that, but I say, God, there will be a place yeah. like that. And then going after, I remember one ministry, I really thought me and Keisha was going to pop in. We went on the radio and everything, announced it, and it just, yeah. I'm like, hey, that was one the one. Then I went to another one. Then I was a social pastor. There's so many different things. But it was so many different things to come here that I want you to remember. Never give up because you had a failure. Because there's a promised land for you. Amen? Yeah. But do this. Journal. Write down the things that you're going through. Because when you're there, sometimes I forget what I went through that got me here. Yeah. But then I start talking to people. I was like, man, how do it feel like to be under the law? Because I've been so removed from the law so long, I don't even know. I don't even know how condemnation feels anymore. And I have to search sometimes for that. And just to talk to another person that's under the law. But the beautiful thing is, God has a promise. And the rain only helps the promise. The rain only helps the rainbow. If you want a flower, and you pray for it. A beautiful garden, you got to have the mud. And when you get the mud, don't look at it as, oh, man, I got this sticky stuff in my hand. Give glory to God for something that's going to beautiful come out that mud. Something beautiful is coming out of you that you can't even see right now. Sometimes you have to choose life even when your back is against the wall and you don't know what to do and you don't know what to go. Just call on Jesus. Get that Jacob spirit and say, I'm not going to let you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that's all you got. But I've been young and I'm getting older. Yeah. And I've never seen God forsake me. Yeah. And I've never seen this seed beg for bread yeah. ever in my life. And that's my testimony, y'all. Yeah. God is good. Amen. 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 My last scripture is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. That this is what defiles a person, y'all. Yeah. It's not what hits you, it's what you say about it. <laughs> we always complain that person didn't do it. That person didn't. No, what you say though? Wow. Wow. The person, you know, Edison created the lamp. I mean, that was a powerful spirit because he fell like 2,000 times. He said, Well, I'm 2,000 closer to getting to the light bulb. And every person got a light bulb in their house or in their apartment. Why? Because a person went 2,000 times and didn't give up. Are you giving up? Are you giving in? No. Or are you coming in agreement with God's word? Amen. Let us all stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. It doesn't matter what your family said about you. Uh-oh. 
It doesn't matter what your job said about you. It doesn't matter about the disappointment. It only matters that he matters about you. Yeah. He leaves the 99 to get you because he loves you. And he gave himself for you. Amen. 